Hey everyone, welcome to the very first Dolphin Deep Dive. Today I'm going to show you how to set up collisions with tile sets in Godot 4, but more specifically, how to associate custom data with individual tiles in that set and read that data back from the tiles when you actually collide with them. I'm going to be showing you how I did this in my 2D RPG, but I'm still going to structure this like a tutorial so it should be easy enough to apply to your own project. If this helps, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, and if you are a Cherry supporter or above on Patreon, I will be sharing this code with you on Patreon, so keep an eye out for that. All right, let's jump in. So what might we actually want to do with custom data that we can assign to individual tiles in a tile set and then read back at runtime? In my case, I want the player to be able to respond to the type of terrain that they're walking on and react in certain ways. For example, when the player walks on sand, I wanna be able to place footprints and when the player wades out in the water, I want to change their appearance and slow their movement speed. This can be achieved by associating terrain data with individual tiles. It turns out this is not at all hard to set up, and in fact, most of the work is done within your tile set, which we're looking at here. The first thing we have to do in the tile set is define a physics layer for the tile set itself. And you can see that I have two here, but the most important one is my first layer, which has a collision layer set to terrain. This is going to describe the collision layer of the individual tiles. With the physics layer set up, I then need to add collision shapes to my tiles that are a part of that layer. To do that, I can click on a tile here, hit the physics drop down, and the drop down for my first physics layer that we just looked at. And at this point, we can add collision polygons. If you don't have one here, the quickest way to do that is to click on your tile and press F, and that'll just fill the entire thing. You can also press C to clear it. One of my favorite things about tile sets in Godot 4 is that you can highlight a bunch of tiles at once and apply the same shape to all of them, which you could not do before. So I can highlight all of my different deep water tiles here and either remove their shape or add a collision shape. Now that these tiles are set up for collision as part of my terrain collision layer, we need to start associating custom data with them that describes the terrain that they represent. We can achieve this by adding an element to the dropdown here for the tile set called custom data layers. You can see that I have a layer named terrain and a type of integer. Once you have a data layer defined here in the tile sets inspector, we can go back and click on a tile and see the custom data dropdown here on the tile inspector. This zero represents the first layer we've defined here, which is terrain. And the value here is the integer value that's going to represent the type of terrain. Now you're probably rightfully looking at this and wondering why I picked integer for the type of the terrain data here and what on earth an integer value of eight corresponds to. That is where the code that parses these values comes into play and that's what we'll jump into now. As a child of my player node, I have a custom scene called terrain detector which extends area 2D. This terrain detector defines a terrain type enumeration that represents a bit mask of various terrain types. So when you saw a value of eight for that water cell, that represents that this is deep water. Because this is a bit mask, I can also do things like define dry sand or wet sand by combining these two values. The reason this class extends area 2D is because area 2D has a very useful signal that will allow us to get information from tiles that we collide with. If we scroll down here to the bottom, you can see that I'm connected to an area 2D signal called on body shape entered. And this is specifically the variant of this signal that passes through the body RID of the collision object. To handle this collision, I'm calling a custom function I wrote called process tile map collision, which takes in the tile map body that we've just collided with and the body RID, which is gonna help us find the individual tile in the tile set of that tile map. If we jump into that function, we can see that we just have a few lines of code here. The first thing we do is store a reference to the tile map we've collided with. And with that reference to the tile map, we can call a built-in function called get coordinates for body RID. This is going to actually give us the coordinates of the tile we have collided with. If you have multiple layers in your tile map as I do, you can loop through those individual layers and in each layer, take your reference again to the tile map and call the built-in function get cell tile data for the layer index and for those particular coordinates of the tile we collided with. With the reference to the tile data, we can call get custom data by layer ID. In my case, I only have one custom data layer, which was my terrain layer. So that's gonna be layer zero. The result of this function call is going to be the value for that layer, which in my case is the terrain mask. At that point, the terrain detector can signal up to its parent player that we are walking on sand and the player can respond accordingly by leaving footprints. 
I love how simple this approach has been and how impactful it's been to like the little bit of polish that I'm working on for my game. As long as I set up my tile sets correctly and define the correct player behavior when responding to a certain terrain type, I can use those tile sets to just quickly build out entire worlds and drop the player in and everything just works. I hope this was helpful. I'd love to hear what y'all are using custom tile data for in your games. I feel like terrain is just one of many different possibilities since the data type can really be anything. But in any case, thank you for joining me for this deep dive and I'll see you in the next one.